So I'm trying to catch up on the last couple of 2017 releases that I wanted to watch before I do my end of the year uh, lists. And one of these was Dawson City Frozen Time, which is a documentary that uh, premiered in 2016 at the Venice Film Festival, but was released theatrically in the United States this year. So that's what I'm counting. And it's now on Filmstruck, along with about 17 other Bill Morrison films. Uh, I'm excited to work my way through that filmography later next year. But uh, Dawson City Frozen Time tells the story of Dawson City um, and how in 1977 or 78, 78, there we go, um, uh, there was discovered over 500 uh, nitrate film prints that had been buried in a swimming pool um, that were from mostly 1900s through uh, 1920s. And it was films that had been sent to the Yukon Territory during the um, gold rush, um, the Yukon gold rush, because Dawson City was like the central hub of that era. And... Um, the, the it traces the film starts with the beginning of um the discovery and the newsreel from that discovery in the 70s and then a small inter interview with the um, people who found it currently and then um the rest of the uh film sort of traces the history of the gold rush and the creation of dawson city and its boom as well as how the films came there what the the impact on Dawson City had on film history in general, um, people like Sid Grauman got his start there. Um, crazy. And uh, as well as there was somebody else, uh, Pantages. Like, they all started in this Gold Rush era of silent film. And then the next thing you know, it's like there's – Sid Grauman has all these theaters and Pantages has all these theaters. And it's crazy. Um, and so it's inter interspliced with uh, newsreel footage, Pathé footage – silent films, um, so many beautiful films that I want to watch the full thing of, and I need to track them down, but my um, little interneting has not found much. Um, although I will say that on the DVD, apparently, I watched this on Filmstruck, but on the DVD, there are eight of the Dawson City films um, on the disc, so I'm going to actually go down uh, later and rent the disc from Videodrome so I can watch those films, as well as several of them are on um, the... Canadian Film Board's YouTube. And I must say, the Canadian Film Board's YouTube is so great. There's actually, um, I don't know if it's Canadian Film Board or one of the other Canadian film um, art boards um, put a bunch of Canadian films on there a couple months ago, including My American Cousin, which is not a silent film. It's from the 80s, but it's one of my favorite movies. Um, so anyways, Canada does but really well by it, its film history. It's all I'm saying. Um, the score is by Alex Summers. Um... And it's very uh, industrial and haunting and beautiful, as are the lovely um, images from the films. And a, a, a piercing look at how the gold rush dislocated uh, lots of First Nation people. Um, so it's a great, interesting look at this era in Canadian film, I mean, in Canadian history, film history, American history, um, the importance of archival work. Um, Another look at how the film industry just disregarded so many of its films, um, how people didn't consider film something worthy of keep, of keeping. Like, these 500 films were, were in this uh, swimming pool um, as sort of a, a landfill. And there's a really heartbreaking moment towards the end of the film where they talk about how many of these films were just, just burned and or thrown into the ice. And you're like, no, the movies. Um, so this is me basically saying love, love the movies, save them, save the movies. Um, anyways, I love silent film and I, I'm going to use the end of this video to, um, reveal my biggest cinema, uh, resolution for 2018. And that is to watch more silent film because I love it. And I always forget how much I love it until, uh, Portononi Silent and then I get really obsessed and I watch a bunch and then I forget for the rest of the year and then Portononi Silent comes back and I'm like oh the silent movies so I'm just gonna um actually start early this year and just watch at least one if not more silent films a week and that is my pretty much my main goal 
Um, and there's so many great silent movies. I wish I could find all the ones that were in here. There's one um, called The Awakening that looked so beautiful. And another one called, what was it? Let me find it. Um, the Stolen Paradise that looked really great. And another one called Bread. And these like silent film ladies had such expressive faces, you know, to quote Norma Desmond. We didn't need words. We had faces then. Like they had faces. They knew how to use them. Um, so this is just such a beautiful film. Um, probably the best documentary, one of the best documentaries I've seen this year. And to pivot from my love of silent film to my dis newly discovered love of documentary cinema, I wish this had played in Atlanta because I would have loved to have seen this on the big screen. It's so gorgeous. Um, it played at the TCM Film Festival, but I work at the TCM Film Festival, and I only get to see like two movies every festival, so I didn't get to see this one. Um, but I wish it had played in Atlanta because I would have just died watching this movie on the big screen. It's a gorgeous, um, feat of filmmaking and, and so many documentaries this year have, have really stolen my heart with their, um, artistic, amazing ways of, of showing history because history can be really dry or it can be really interesting and history should be really interesting, but it's how you serve that history as a story. Um, because we are a storytelling people, and I think this tells a very compelling, wonderful, important story. Um, so you should check it out. It's on Filmstruck. You can also rent it all over the internet. And like I said, apparently um, on the DVD Blu-ray, you can watch eight of the found films. So I'm going to rent it and watch those films. Um, and I'll tell you how that is once I do. Um, so um, have a good night. I have one more film I'm going to try to fit in, maybe two. I'm about to sneeze. One film on Netflix that I need to watch. One film that I may see in theaters, depending on if I actually manage to wake up before 2 tomorrow. We'll see what happens. And then uh, I'll post my top list, and it will be not a video, but actually written words. So um, look forward to that on my social media channels. Have a good night.